Es eso. El 14 de abril, dos de las sinagogas más antiguas de Amberes, la casa del rabino Rottenberg y varios edificios más son incendiados al grito de al infierno la tribu Judas. Y en la ciudad retumba el eco siniestro de la noche de los cristales rotos. Se impone el toque de queda mucho más restricto que en otras partes de México. Y comenzamos a escribir una de las historias más tristes de nuestra de nuestro ser, de nuestras vivencias, de nuestra historia vieja, presente y contemporánea. Es por eso que creo que hoy tenemos que seguir recordando nuestro pasado, seamos o no seamos, católicos, judíos, protestantes, musulmanes, tenemos que seguir recordando nuestras raíces, nuestro pasado, nuestra historia. Y de ahí, de donde nace este amor, en principios de esta guerra, nos cuenta cómo, se va, cómo es la historia de cada uno de los personajes. ¿Qué hace ella, la novia? ¿Y qué hace él, el novio, sin conocerse? ¿De dónde vienen? ¿A qué se dedican? Ella, una mujer muy generosa, que, que toda la comunidad la quiere, habla varios idiomas, es una mujer amable, que ayuda a la gente, y un día la lleva en este campo de concentración. De esa página que les acabo de leer, hasta la otra que acabo de ¿no? que, que les quiero compartir pues transcurre prácticamente todo el libro eso es lo que quiero que ustedes eh, lo que quiero convidarles a que lean yo les cuento el principio no les cuento el final pero sí lo que pasa en medio ojalá que ustedes se interesen muchísimo como me interese yo lo siguiente que les quiero compartir es la fuga ellos se conocen en un campo de concentración es, es, creo que es inimaginable que poner un ejemplo para comparar cómo nos podríamos conocer aquí en México no sé, Lecumberri a lo mejor las Islas Marías que ella trabaja obligatoriamente en uno de sus lugares aunque está en calidad de detenida, de arrestada de judía caminar despacio, avanzar con determinación pero lentamente sin ceder a la tentación de pararse, de respirar el aire que hay al otro lado del alambre de púas. La entrada, en sentido único de Birkenau, está a sus espaldas. Los guardias escrutan los campos desde la torre. Aún deben esperar el segundo perímetro de vigilancia para no sentirse a tiro. Pero la, el SS Edek es el personaje del que estamos hablando en el libro, él, y la prisionera Mala, Saben que los alemanes acaban de cambiar las fuerzas encargadas de patrullar y los recién llegados no pueden conocer a todos sus compañeros. El sendero de tierra serpentea en medio de los arbustos y se pierde entre los alemanes. Más allá, en algún lugar, está la junta rampa, la rampa exterior. Ahora se utiliza menos porque los alemanes quieren eliminar a toda prisa a los deportados y los convoyes entran directamente en el campo. Mala aún lleva el lavabo en la cabeza, que besa mucho. Suda. La áspera ropa se pedra a la piel debido al calor. El corazón le late tan fuerte que el pecho parece a punto de estallar. Edek cuenta los pasos. Ha estudiado el recorrido y se lo conoce de memoria. Sabe dónde pueden abandonar lo que ya no sirve, ese lavabo, el uniforme de rayas del prisionero y el miedo. El primer objetivo es dejar atrás Budi, uno de los 40 subcampos de Auschwitz donde trabajan unos 800 prisioneros, la mitad de los cuales son mujeres. La breve historia de amor en libertad de Mala y Edek inicia aquí, donde la naturaleza estalla, protectora y el espectro cercano de Birkenau parece remoto. Trece días de amor de los que no hay ningún testimonio, porque los únicos que lo vivieron ya no existen. Francesca. ¿Por qué hablar de una historia de amor, de esta historia de amor, cuando conocemos millones de historias, ¿cómo te la encontraste? Uh, bueno. Buenas noches. Welcome to my country. <laughs> uh, well, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Anya, and thank you, everybody, for uh, this invitation. Uh, I'm proud to be here, uh, even because. Um, uh, Part of the family, uh, I mean, what remain of the family uh, of Mala, um, uh, managed to escape in uh, South America, in Ecuador. Uh, so when when uh, when the book was translated in Spanish, uh, I was very 
uh, happy to, to send them a copy. Um, the nephew, um, a young lady, which, uh, which uh, her name is uh, Marka, and, uh, and the name is Marka, uh, in the memory of uh, the protagonist of my book. So I thank you <laughs> two times uh, for being here. And uh, regarding the stories, uh, I mean, it happened by chance for me uh, to, to know the story of this two uh, lovers which uh, uh, in the, among the workers in the memorial, uh, in the Auschwitz memorial, they are known as uh, uh, Romeo and Julia. Um, I, I, I met them by chance. I was working in Auschwitz for uh, uh, institutional visit of Italian president. I'm a journalist, so I was there for my job. And, and, uh, and I have a friend, a good friend, she works in the uh, Auschwitz archive, and she told me about this story. And, and, uh, and I was surprised by the fact that even if it's very, very powerful stories, it's completely unknown outside of the restricted uh, um, Auschwitz memorial. Uh, and it's true, there are many other uh, love stories, and, uh, and if you want, there are many other stories. In the Auschwitz archive, uh, you have thousands uh, and thousands and thousands of stories not written. I mean, stories of people which are there, and, uh, and uh, they are not famous, like uh, uh, Anna Frank, for example, uh, but the story is there. And Mala and Dedek are uh, two characters like this. Um, what uh, pushed me in trying to work and to find uh, as many details as possible was the fact that uh, the two, uh, they, they, I, I perceive them like really modern hero. Uh, she was Jewish and he was not Jewish. He was a, a, a partisan, a Polish partisan. But uh, coming from uh, a Poland uh, where anti-Semitism was already present before the war, so his background was uh, quite close to the, uh, to the worst of the anti-Semitism. And he was deported because he was uh, um, uh, fighting with the Arma Krajowa, which, is the, uh, which was the, the, resistance, the Polish resistance army. So he was deported as a political prisoner. And she was supported there because because Jewish. Uh, so <coughs> the two, they had very different background, and uh, they 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 met in the camp uh, because both of them um, could count on better condition than the other. Uh, in the case of Edek, because he was a political prisoner, one of the first one, so he was working at the organization of the camp, and he could move easily even to the, to the female part of the camp. And Mala, uh, she, she was, as Anya already said, she could speak six languages. And in 1942, when she was deported in the, in the summer, um, Auschwitz was already an L, but an L with thousands of languages spoken. Uh, because um, Jewish were deported by all the countries in Europe. And Mala, could be the bridge. So she was immediately used by, by, the, uh, by the, the Germans as a translator. And so she could have been uh, a capo, or she could have been someone taking advantage by her position, but actually she never did. And whatever I, I, I found about the letters, documents, uh, and the few survivors uh, I could speak with about Mala, uh, nobody, I never had one single word against Mala because the memory of everybody was a young, beautiful, and more lucky women than the others that spent all her time trying to help the, the weaker, but also the stronger, because her point was to try to help the stronger in order to, make, to allow them to go out and to tell the world was well well. ¿Cómo decidiste llevar esta 
investigación periodística porque se basa en tiempos, se basa en hechos reales y de la información dura, eh, cruel, concreta, pasarla a este libro de es pues una novela, una novela periodística me atrevería a decir. ¿Y por qué, Francesca, eh, platicas en pasado y en presente y vas jugando con los tiempos? Well, my my first concern was uh, uh, to touch a, a, an issue like the Holocaust. I'm not an expert. I'm not an academic, so, so uh, I wanted to be uh, the, the, the the more honest possible and the more close possible to the details, the real details. Um, on on the other side, uh, it's true. It's a love story, so there was the risk to 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 tend to a kind of romantic narrative uh, about a love story which has no happy end uh, and uh, the, I mean, it was not possible to have any kind of happy end. So I, I tried to work as, as, uh, as I do as a journalist, first collecting information, uh, whatever I could, uh, in the archive of Auschwitz where, uh, where there are, uh, you know, it's very interesting how the archive of Auschwitz work. Because what they do is that they, they, they try to find survivors or parents of the survivors and they uh, encourage them to go and to tell their stories. Even if they do not have any tools to write or to tell their stories in a, in a nice way. And they just draft all their memories. So you have this archive, you have people that go there and just tell the memory of the receipt of food uh, that they used to dream when they were uh, in Auschwitz. So you have all this material uh, written in different languages and the first thing I did was to try to, to find uh, information about Mala and their, and their stories um, through these materials. And, and there is a lot. Then uh, I, I tried to find uh, the last survivor, and I, I could find only three still alive. Um, and so I, I four actually four, but one of the, of the four she passed away a few months ago. She was uh, 102 years old, and so I I I add to the material of the archive the voices the real voices of people uh, uh, with the true experience uh, of, of the two years where Mal and Dedek were in Auschwitz. Uh, and then uh, again, uh, I, I, I worked as a journalist. Uh, I went to see the place, the place, the real place, where um, Mala was born in Poland. And then in, uh, in um, the family moved from Poland uh, to Belgium, to Antwerp in Belgium. Uh, when she was a teenager, so I went to Belgium, to Antwerp, and, uh, and, and, and I went to see the place, the house where they lived, the, the, um, the farm where she worked, and, and uh, the activities, and the, the cinema, and, the, and the, I mean, wherever I could have any tracks of her uh, uh, life in Antwerp. And the same did with Edek. Uh, and then I put all together and, and, I, and I try to maintain the intensity of love, which is, which is true. Uh, but at the same time, um, I mean, my effort was not to undermine the, the, the frame of Auschwitz and the, of the frame of the hell where this love story happened. I don't know if I managed to read it. Nos has hablado de Mala, que era una chica linda, generosa, que todos lo recuerdan con mucha amabilidad y tienen una sonrisa cuando hablan de ella. Bueno, los tres sobrevivientes y los testimonios de los eh, que nos hablas. Y Edek, que era una persona fuera de la comunidad, ¿puedes hablar un poquito más de, de él? Y como en una película, si lo logramos imaginar, si nos, que no nos cuenta el final, ya nos ha dicho que no es un final feliz y lo podemos adivinar. Pero nos podrías contar un 
poquito de él y cómo fueron esos 13 días de amor que vivieron en libertad. Yes, Eric was, uh, was uh, one of my problems in writing. Because being a woman, uh, I was mad. No había nada. I was mad because, uh, I mean, as, as a woman, I, I tried to imagine uh, this young, beautiful lady in her 20s. Uh, with, uh, I mean, she was really brilliant, uh, according to everybody I had been touched when she was in Antwerp. And uh, she was quite secular, even if the family was religious. So she was really, really modern. And, and, and she was a woman, so for me it was, I mean, I was very, very much involved in Mala, in building the Mala character. And then I realized, but there is no Mala without Eric. <laughs> and I tried to understand uh, uh, this guy. Uh, we, actually, it's, it's more difficult to, to imagine and to shape, uh, because Mala, through Yad Vashem and through um, some archive uh, in the in institution like in Washington, the Jewish Museum in Washington, I would find something more. But Eric, he was arrested when he was 17. And he arrived in Auschwitz with the first convoy, the first one, the first there were like 700 something prisoners. And he was arrested, he, he, he was a student, he, he had just started the university, uh, but it, it was, um, I, I think that they, they, they were organizing an action against the German, and he was arrested. And he arrived in Auschwitz, uh, really a teenager, and, and he started to build the camp, which would have been the camp, because at the beginning was was really, something in, in fear and um, and then it, the, 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 the impression I had by, by the witness is that uh, he grew up as a man in the camp with the political awareness as well uh, he was an activist before but he was 17 years old and and then you have this this, this young man uh, fall in love with Mala uh, but but still, uh, his, his projects are related to the resistance. And when they decided to escape, uh, actually they didn't decide to escape together. The plan was a plan uh, was an EDEC plan, a plan of EDEC with another uh, with a friend of EDEC. And the idea was to uh, to to buy the silence and the help of uh, um, an SS and to escape and to join the resistance, the Polish resistance. And it was not that crazy, because at that point in 1944, uh, Germany was already losing the war. So the attention uh, on, on the camp was um, concentrated on, on the Jewish uh, and less on the other prisoners. So other prisoners managed to escape in that period. And Eden planned everything. And then, uh, at the very last minutes, like one week before the, the day, uh, he tells his friend, listen, Mala will come with us. And this friend is like, are you crazy? Are you kidding? We can't bring her with us. First of all, because she's a woman. And, uh, and you know, the, it was quite difficult, even from a physical point of view, to escape. And second, she's Jewish. And the friend told Eric, uh, we cannot find no one um, available to help us with a Jewish lady. And, uh, and the friend also tell uh, Eric, uh, you know, you had an affair in the camp. It was a kind of Okay, you managed to survive, but now life is outside. And, uh, and Eddie comes with no, I'm not going out without Mara. And at the end of the day, they escape together, and uh, Eddie's friend uh, renounced because he, he doesn't trust the, the, the possibility of success with Mara. And uh, so 
you know, you have this guy, which is a gym, somehow. And, and the confirmation of this is that when, uh, when the study finished, uh, the, the two have been healed, and the war finished, uh, Edek's friend, he survived, and he goes to Edek's father, with, uh, with uh, yeah, some years, some years from Edek. And he goes there and he says, listen, your son, he passed away, and he was killed, and he was tortured, but he was a hero. Uh, and the father uh, decided to cancel completely the memory of Edek. Because from his point of view, uh, Edek had betrayed their family, their country, and their people. The answer was, uh, he could have been alive if he would have not decided to escape with a Jewish woman. So the memory of Edek is completely cancelled by his family, before than by the history. Uh, I mean, I think that he deserved <laughs> to be remembered. Por eso es complicado que, que entendamos que hay muy poco material sobre él, por eso me intrigaba un poco saber más de él, porque sí, en efecto, está muy bien delineada la personalidad, la, el carácter de ella, pero de él, no soy periodista, entonces tenía que preguntar. <risa> una vez que tenemos los datos de ellos y vas construyendo esta historia, una historia dura, de amor en un campo de concentración, también hay otros personajes que cuando lo logran, nos gustaría conocer de ellos, cuando caminan y caminan y caminan por esos senderos que hoy están plagados de anuncios ambientalistas y que nos haces un paso también muy bonito por el pasado y el presente, hoy como esos escenarios en donde ellos vivieron han cambiado, o poco creo han cambiado, porque la historia es muy fuerte, el peso de las baldosas aún sigue, hay gente que, que ayudó, pero también costó trabajo encontrarlos, como Joseph Simalek. ¿Quién era Joseph Simalek? El primer eh, poblador en donde ellos encuentran refugio. You know, writing this book was for me like uh, uh, working with Chinese books. Uh, every time I, 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 I found something about Mala or Tedek, uh, suddenly something else about other characters appears. And this Joseph uh, you, you mentioned, um, he passed away. Uh, but uh, he was a worker, a Polish worker, um, uh, living in the village very close to Auschwitz. And it's the only village where uh, Mala and Dedek uh, um, passed the night, and we know that they passed the night when they are free. You know about this village, um, and this Joseph is the man who helped them to escape, because uh, there were a lot of workers um, living uh, in the suburb around the, the concentration camp, going to work inside and going back home in the evening. Um, this Joseph he was paid uh, like the SS who gave them the uniform to escape. Uh, but, uh, but, but, but Joseph, the agreement with Joseph uh, is that he was waiting for them in the village. Because they, they, the, the plan was to arrive in the village dressed like a, a, with the uniform of an SS and uh, Edek, and Mala is a prisoner. Uh, but then they had to change and, and, uh, and to try to reach the mountain uh, and then the the resistance. Um, so Joseph was waiting for them in the village. And you know, we, we can imagine from what he does that he had a lot of regret. And, uh, and at a certain point, uh, the man and dad arrive in the village and they, they cannot find him. Uh, it's like um, he doesn't want to meet them anymore. But then, uh, again, uh, I mean, it's, the, the, probably it, there is a psychological war inside him. And at the end, he decides to help them, but he gives them like salami 
and something to drink and new clothes and say, but disappear by my eyes and no, don't stay around my, uh, my house. And he brought them in, in the uh, countryside, uh, close to a, a farm, which is still there, uh, but it's abandoned. Uh, and then they are alone. Uh, Joseph, um, uh, I mean, about Joseph, there is nothing in the village. But when I went there, and they could speak only in Polish, I went there and I went to the municipality, and in the municipality I went with a friend of mine who speaks Polish. And in the municipality they have a small library, and in the small library we started to search something about this Joseph. And then at the end we, 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 we found a little book, uh, not even a book, uh, it's more like a uh, memoir, um, where it's like uh, it's a kind of confession and of all his fears and uh, all uh, his regrets about these stories and, uh, and nobody know in the village about uh, what he did and uh, but in the library there is this, this short uh, confession of Joseph and we translate it and that's why I know about these stories. Se dan cuenta.